Animals like shrews and bats are recovered. These tiny bits of evidence will join thousands of other clues. This is the lower jaw of a fruit bat who flew in the skies over Aramis 4.4 million years ago and would have looked down to see Ardipithecus. The fruit bat would have seen something else as it flew over Artie's world. Trees, lots of trees. These fossilized seeds fell from trees that once grew not on an African savanna, but in a dense woodland. This came out in the last rain. What we have here are fragments of fossilized wood. We have not seen fossilized wood coming out from this salmon culture sediments uh, beyond the uh, mammal and fossil. So since the last rain this week, uh, we're tr starting seeing a lot of uh, plants that were associated with these organisms 4.4 million years ago. For nearly a century, it's been widely believed that humans evolved bipedality in Africa's open savannas. Now, this long-held savanna idea has been overturned by a decade of fieldwork and an avalanche of solid fossil evidence. So all theories are being knocked out by new discoveries from the Midlawash. So it's very critical in terms of what we're doing here and what we're finding. The investigators have now established ancient Artie's habitat. But what about Artie herself? If all her parts, skin, muscles, bones, and teeth were restored and reassembled, what would this strange African creature have looked like? To bring Artie back to life, the project now turns to one of the world's greatest natural history artists, Jay Maternus. It's a privilege and a challenge. The science team has now spent over a decade examining the Artipithecus skeleton, piece by piece. Now it's time to put all the pieces together by harnessing science to art. This process goes back to the time of Leonardo da Vinci, who created lifelike human images based on his own detailed anatomical drawings. Now, using the same technique, one of today's most accomplished natural history artists takes on a creature da Vinci could have never imagined. For illustrator Jay Maternus, the challenge of creating the first lifelike scientific drawings of Artie has become a passion. Right now, of course, Artie is, has uh, consumed all of my attention uh, because it's so demanding. And as I say, it's uh, such a, an outstanding fossil, uh, the significance of which is, uh, is profound. Project scientists have asked Jay to create the official scientific portraits of Artie. His drawings will be released to the public and scrutinized by countless scientists around the world as well. So accuracy is the absolute priority. Over the years, Maternus has collaborated with leading scientists to create lifelike, scientifically based drawings of human ancestors including Lucy species at Lytoli and at Hadar. Maternus often functions like a sketch artist in a criminal investigation, but the drawings of Artipithecus will demand a much higher level of detail. Ten years into the project, Maternus pays a visit to Owen Lovejoy's lab at Kent State University. To begin reassembling this intriguing creature on paper, they'll use the high-precision plaster casts of the Artipithecus skeleton. We take that piece and then align it with that one. He is the equivalent of a supercomputer into which years and years of primate structure have been poured and recorded and out of which comes an almost perfect image.
Maternus begins his portraits of Ardi by creating highly detailed drawings of each of the dozens of individual fossil casts. The fragments of her skull, her crushed pelvis, her grasping toe and hand bones. This staggering body of work amounts to hundreds of pieces of paleo art, each one precisely rendered at full scale. Jay's task also includes reconstructing on paper tissues that were never found. From bones to ligaments, muscles to skin, and finally to Artie's hair and eyes. My part of it is to interpolate between what is there and uh, what, what is missing, and uh, also to correct for any distortion. We have only one uh, cervical vertebra. Nothing has remained of the scapula. Uh, so we had to infer that from modern humans and, and apes. The science team guides Jay on how best to fill in gaps between the recovered bones. Gradually, his drawing of Artie's skeleton begins to take shape. Because of his artistic skills, and because of anatomical knowledge, we can take something like a partial foot and look at that foot, describe and interact with him as to what's present, what's missing. And then based on our, our joint anatomical knowledge, replace the missing parts. Literally hundreds of emails fly back and forth between artist and scientist, many with revised anatomical drawings attached. We've gone through drawing after drawing after drawing as we discovered additional aspects of the skeleton, uh, as Tim cleaned more and more parts of it, and as Tim and Gen and I uh, completed the reconstruction of the various parts. Each time that we did that, it changed a bit. At Kent State University, Lovejoy reviews Jay's latest drawings. Good. With the expanded right. rib cage, uh, the shoulders have been elevated over the mm -hmm. previous version. Mm -hmm. The yeah. hamulus was much too big, mm -hmm. but you have to mirror image. Okay. Yes. Now, if you put the new one down, it's much more gracile as it should be. Yeah, much more appropriate. The thumb looks small because the phalanges are so long. Yes, the, and the it's thumb a, is astonishingly yeah. small. Yeah, I mean it's the, just full of surprises. Yeah. So it's a very odd looking creature and remarkably non-chimpanzee like. <laughs> yeah. Every bone and joint is carefully examined to ensure the accuracy of Artie's skeletal portraits. Trapezoid. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's what's the what's the next step, do you think? The next step would be to to put a skin on her. Okay. With all the all the trimmings. Hair and and eyelashes and and such. Mm -hmm. Taped it together here. Yeah. Maternus would work for over two years, adding muscle and skin to Artie's body. To envision what she might have looked like. Far from Ethiopia, far from the backbreaking field work in the middle Awash and the long nights pouring over shattered fossils, Artie's portraits are now completed in a quiet Virginia studio. Drawn in charcoal, this fusion of art and science resurrects this creature from the inside out, from her skeleton to her muscles, and finally to her outer features, her face and her eyes. With her long arms and grasping big toes, Artipithecus finally emerges from the shadows of deep time. Artipithecus was a biped but a very primitive biped, a biped that could grasp with its foot. That's different from any other mammal that's ever been found. But what would this strange bipedal animal with grasping feet have looked like when it walked? Discovery Channel filmmakers have come up with a strategy to find out.
They'll use digital tools developed by Hollywood Studios to help visualize how Artie might have moved through her ancient world. Artipithecus seems to be a paradox, a bipedal hominid with a grasping foot and a chimp-sized brain. Here we have a creature that was unanticipated by science. The evidence for it could only have come from the fossil record. Artie's skeleton reveals a strange new creature.